Hello, everyone. Well, this is the second presentation in a new series that I'm developing for my Facebook page, which is clinical updates on key herbs uh, based on some really outstanding and intriguing clinical research that I'll be including going forward that will extend our therapeutic reach and, and indeed our understanding of the clinical value of certain herbs. So uh, I have done andrographis, and in this one, I'll be covering celery seed, which is something that uh, I, I hope that often tends to get ignored um, in terms of its therapeutic value. And I will say, and I did post quite a while ago about how celery seed is still one of my preferred herbs for osteoarthritis, and it gives tremendous results. You have to give a decent dose. So I use five mil of a one in two extract twice a day, typically, or otherwise I'll use it in, in tablet form in combination with boswellia and turmeric and ginger. But it, it is a really valuable herb for osteoarthritis to the point where 20 years ago, there was, as I mentioned in the previous post, a, a craze for celery seed. Uh, it was one of the best-selling herbs on the Australian market because of this activity in OA. But from overseas, especially China and the Middle East, we're discovering new uses for this herb. And, and certainly what's coming through is stressing that it is a vascular herb. And dare I say it, given it's one of my favourite topics, a microvascular herb. So... Uh, what are we going to be talking about today? Well, firstly, we're going to be talking about celery seed, in inverted commas, and I'll explain why soon, making the big time. And then its application in hypertension, Parkinson's disease, and vascular cognitive impairment and stroke recovery. I bet many of you never thought about using celery seed in any of those clinical contexts. So how has celery seed made the big time? Well, here it is. It's a paper that was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association Neurology. So when a herbal extract, or in this case, a herbal phytochemical makes it into a JAMA journal with a positive clinical trial, that is indeed big time. Look at the number of authors. So what did they actually look at? They looked at DL3N-butylphthalide, abbreviated NBP, in the context of patients with acute ischemic stroke, a 90-day trial done in China with over a thousand patients a seriously good clinical trial so much to the point that obviously the editors of JAMA neurology couldn't really refuse publishing it so what is nbp butyl phthalide it's one of the main components of celery seed and indeed it distills out with the essential oil it's a funny kind of compound because it's not super volatile so when you make celery essential oil a percentage of nbp uh, goes over but a percentage also re remains behind in the celery seed so what did they find they found that among patients who'd had acute ischemic stroke who were receiving conventional medical care the addition of nbp was associated with a higher proportion of patients achieving a favorable functional outcome at 90 days compared to a matched placebo. Now, the dose they used of NBP was 600 milligrams a day. That's the standard dose that's used. You can't achieve that with celery seed extract. I'll be talking more to that as we go along because I still or I believe that that doesn't necessarily rule out the value of celery in this clinical context. So here's the results that they received. And you see, you've got the no effect line, 
and then you got placebo better and the butyl phthalide better. And look, it was better on everything. Uh, a better result for men than, than, than women, men than women. But there were more men in the trial, so that might be why. Uh, 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 consistent results uh, depending on the, you know, the severity of the stroke, whether or not the person had high blood pressure, whether or not they had diabetes, age. Uh, certainly it seemed to work better in people who are older, which, which you know, can be of an advantage. And the location of, of the ischemic stroke, there wasn't that much variation there. But that's a, a huge, an odds ratio of 1.7 overall. That's, that's, that's a huge, uh, uh, sorry, here it is, overall. That's a huge uh, clinical outcome, 1.7. And what that means is you've got a really good chance that if you prescribe NBP, patients recovering from stroke for 90 days, the chances are more often than not that they're going to substantially improve. So this is big, big time evidence. Um, it builds on a lot of research that's already conducted in China. So ju just for further background, this is from Wikipedia. There's NBP and butyl phthalide, the structure up there. It's one of the chemical constituents. It's celery seed oil that, along with sedenolide, is primarily responsible for the aroma and taste of celery. So that um, characteristic aroma and taste we have with celery, which is very strong. Uh, those of you who have celery uh, juice in the morning will know how strong it is because it taints every other juice that you then put through the juicer. Um, uh, butyl phthalide, MBP, is is one of those components now and and just a point of chemistry you've all heard of phthalates which are really bad things that occur in plastics and not good for you these are phthalides are quite unrelated and wikipedia goes on to say that studies in animal models suggest that butyl phthalide may be useful for the treatment of hypertension and may have neuroprotective effects and indeed in 2002, more than two decades ago, it was approved in China for the treatment of cerebral ischemia. So let's now look at the clinical evidence for celery seed or NBP in those three key areas I outlined. So let's start with hypertension. This was a trial done from Iran, a randomized, triple-blind, placebo-controlled crossover trial the effect of uh, celery seed extract, and it contained 20 milligrams of NP, NBP per day in the treatment of hypertensive patients. And it was conducted over four weeks. And at week four, the um, systolic blood pressure was decreased by 11 millimetres and the diastolic decreased by eight millimetres. So quite significant levels. Now, generally, um, if you want to compare that with, say, a one and two extract of celery seed, it's about uh, four to, uh, uh, well, uh, sorry, it's, uh, yeah, it's about four to eight mil per day, depending on the quality you can get. So that's, that's definitely doable, and it's in line with my osteoarthritis dose when I'm using celery seed as a simple, which is five mils twice a day. So it's certainly nowhere near the 600 milligrams that was used in the clinical trials, but I'll come to that dosage issue uh, a bit further. Uh, pulse pressure also decreased uh, by a smaller amount as well, but it was significant. So celery seed is something we should definitely consider in the management of our patients with hypertension because the de average decrease in a clinical trial of 11 millimetres of mercury is quite a significant result. And as I said, probably three to four mils of the one in two twice a day will achieve that, six to eight mil per day. Now, are they also uh, in the same cohort in this clinical trial uh, looked at the impact of the celery seed on anxiety and depression as well. And they used the Beck Anxiety and Depression Indices 
and observed a reduction in both of those, as well as the reduction in blood pressure. So part of the effect of celery seed in helping with hypertension could be that it reduces anxiety in those patients. So the, the findings suggest that celery seed may offer anxiolytic and antidepressant properties in patients with hypertension. There was also a review paper published that suggested that these effects of celery um, in terms of cardiovascular, cardiometabolic syndrome, go beyond just the hypertension. And they're suggesting it could have value in terms of weight control, dyslipidemia, and indeed hyperglycemia. So uh, a lot of this is based, well, most of it is based not on clinical evidence, but experimental evidence. But it does suggest we should be looking further into celery seed as a treatment for these four key aspects of cardiometabolic syndrome. <laughs> now to Parkinson's disease. There was a, a trial of NBP in uh, 173 patients with Parkinson's disease, and it was over uh, six months. And improvements were seen, in, for example, in motor function, uh, including tremor and non-tremor scores, sleep quality, and general overall Parkinson disease symptoms compared to the control group where there was no improvement. So the key finding was that over six months, NBP at that 600 milligrams a day greatly improved Parkinson disease symptoms and slowed its progression. And in fact, there's more than one clinical trial in this regard. And there was recently a systematic review and meta-analysis that investigated uh, NBP in dementia associated with Parkinson's disease. And they looked at eight randomized controlled trials and found that NBP combined uh, with uh, Western medicine had a better ability to improve cognitive functioning, including you know, daily living activities and so on. Um, so it certainly helped cognitive function based on the meta-analysis and, and many other aspects of Parkinson's disease and was more effective than just conventional drugs alone. Then we have this clinical trial that was done in uh, patients with cognitive impairment double-blind placebo-controlled randomized control trial. And they had what was called subcortical vascular cognitive impairment without dementia. And again, this was a six-month trial. And it's thought that they had, if you look at the title below, that they had this ischemic small vessel disease. And this is, again, where the microvascular aspect of celery is coming in. And, and indeed, many, many decades ago, it was postulated by some researchers that the uh, benefits of celery seed in osteoarthritis were also based on microvascular activity. So after, after the six months, there was a more significant change seen in the uh, NBP uh, treatment group versus placebo in terms of the cognitive measure that was used, which was the cognitive subscale of the Alzheimer's disease assessment scale. And the safety profile being good, it was successful in improving cognitive functions in patients who had this subcortical vascular cognitive impairment without dementia. So it's very interesting because I just saw an article, for example, on chemo brain, and it was suggesting that chemo brain was caused by a reduction in blood supply to the brain. So you could be thinking exactly of using NBP and indeed celery seed for that application. So I began with stroke recovery, and I'll just finish off with stroke recovery. There have been other trials. Here, here was a, uh, just a 14-day trial. And that trial found significantly greater increases in uh, a vascular endothelial growth factor and basic fibroblast growth factor, which indicates 
a healing response. And that was correlated with uh, activity of daily life scores uh, being much more improved in the NBP group compared to the control group. So key findings were that the NBP seems to improve uh, healing rate in the brain post-stroke and is superior <laughs> to just conventional therapies alone. I should have added the word alone. And you see it on this graph. So if you look at the beginning of the trial, the neurological deficit, and then the end of the trial, there's improvement in the control group, as you would expect, because healing will take place after a stroke. But compare that with the NBP group. Look how much more significant the healing was to the point where the neurological deficit is actually quite small at the end of that uh, treatment period. And finally, uh, in stroke recovery, because as I mentioned, this has been approved, this NBP has been approved in China for more than two decades, there's a huge number of randomized controlled trials. This systematic review and meta-analysis found 57 trials on the efficacy of NBP in terms of recovery after acute ischemic stroke. And it showed it was associated with a reduction in, in uh, composite outcome of death and dependency and death on its own and an increase in what's called the Bartel index, which is just a, a measure of functional activity post-stroke. So high level evidence confirms that MBP treatment has the potential to help stroke patients uh, improve their engagement in daily activities and reduce neurological deficits and indeed uh, short-term death rates in the context of, of the trial parameters. So I'm now going to talk about this issue of dose. So in the Parkinson disease and the stroke recovery, uh, it was 600 milligrams a day of NBP. You cannot hope to achieve that either using a celery extract or celery essential oil. And because NBP is only partially volatile, using the celery essential oil on its own um, is not necessarily you know, a huge advantage because there's still some left behind after the distillation. So, so probably you can use the whole extract. So I would say that, and it's a quite a high dose and you might get issues with patients, but it's worth trialing in patients' stroke recovery, in patients with Parkinson's disease and so on, and, and those with you know, uh, poor cerebral blood flow. Uh, it's worth trialing uh, eight mils of a one and two extract three times a day. That can get you up to, if you're lucky and you're using a good extract, maybe about 100 milligrams of NBP per day. And because you're using it in a whole herbal context, that could well be within a, a significant therapeutic range. I mean, let's look at the analogy of cannabidiol, CBD. There are clinical trials of 500 milligrams of CBD, for example, that have been published. Yet, people find with their clinical experience just 20, 30, 40 milligrams of CBD gives them a similar effect, especially when it's used uh, in a whole cannabis oil context. So here I'm making perhaps a, a similar suggestion for celery seed in these important clinical areas of Parkinson's disease, uh, cerebral cognitive impairment due to poor blood supply and post-stroke recovery. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed this research update on celery seed. It's certainly, I would believe it's an underrated herb. So we could add this also as a new installment in my underrated herbs uh, features as well.